Wherever you're watching around Australia tonight on the Fox Sports Network, from Byron Bay to Broome, from Cairns to Carnarvon, or right here on the beautiful Gold Coast, it's main event time. Let's bring on the boom. 10 rounds of boxing action for the WBO Global and the IBF International Super Lightweight titles. First of all, in the red corner, please welcome Fatty Kellas. And in the blue corner, Liam Paro. WBA Global and the IBF International Super Lightweight titles. First of all, fighting out of our red corner, weighing in at 63.5 kilos, a veteran of 415 amateur bouts and a 2012 Olympian. His professional record, 12 fights, 12 wins, seven by way of knockout. Training at the EC Boxing Gym in Turkey. Please give it up for Fatih, the fire of Turkey, Keller. His opponent tonight fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 63.3 kilos. 16 fights, 16 wins, 11 by way of knockout. Training under Alfie DiCarlo, he fights out of DC Boxing in Brisbane. Winner of the WBO Global and WBO Asia Pacific Super Lightweight titles, please give it up for Liam the Prodigy Paro! Obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Punch him up and get everything you want. Good luck to both of you. Nathan DiCarlo, it's main event time here at Ace Boxing Promotions. It is Liam Paro in the blue corner against Fatiha Kallis of Turkey, the former Olympian. Steve Marshall, referee in charge. We've got 10 rounds of boxing action. Round one. Yeah, great matchup this one, a big test for Liam. Obviously, he's, this will be his fourth international opponent in a row, but no one quite like this calibre of opponent. Number 12 in the world currently is Fatih Kallis, so another step up for Liam. It certainly is. I mean, he's had good fights against Batiki, Robert Thetlik, Marcelemo, Marcelemiano, Belasai, the Italian. In all his fights, uh, Paro, he's stepped up. He's shown good, you know, good, good movement, good caliber. He's improved in every fight. This fighter here, Fatiha, he likes to come forward. He's a former Olympian, as we all know. He likes to come forward, and he likes to come forward with that overhand right and follow with either the left uppercut or left hook. He's a pressure fighter, and I think if you're at his level, it's a hard fight. If you can outbox him, if you stand there and trade with him, it's going to be a hard fight. If Liam can outbox him, because we, we do know Liam can box and he can bang. The question is, how is his hands? Yeah. And, and more than his 12 fights is, that he's had as a pro, Fatih Carlos, it's the 415 fights he's had as an amateur. There yep. is no style in this world that he has not seen, has not, come, has not beaten, or at least come close to beating. So he's, he's, he knows exactly what's in front of him and Liam. A southpaw, you'd usually think here in Australia, oh, southpaw, it's an awkward. But over in Europe... 
It's his bread and butter, isn't it? Eighty percent of them are yep. southpaw, so he's nothing that he hasn't seen here in Liam tonight. Exactly right. And like I said before, he likes to mix it. This guy, I think Liam would do good if he could just use his boxing skills and then make him miss, open him up, and then hit him with his power shot. Because Fatia Talas, tell us, he's a tough cat and he likes to fight. He likes to trade. He would like nothing more, I feel, than to have Liam Burrow stand straight in front of him and brawl with him. But that's where Liam has to do what we saw NG do and use his boxing ability, use his skill, use his distance. Because he's got good movement and he's a good sharp boxer. Nice. Nice body shots from a distance. Yeah, good. That's what he needs to do. He needs to invest in the body straight to the body, keep him at that distance, and then chop over with that left hand. We can see Kellis just looks to fight. He looks to mix it. He looks to make this a street fight. That's his style. That, that, that's the type of boxer he is. Yeah, Fate Kallis, yep. current WBO European champion, so that doesn't come e easy. It's a, it's a very hard feat and very prestigious title over there. Exactly. He's done all his uh, learning fights, as, as, as Pyro has done as well. They're both ready to take this next step, yep. and this is a perfect fight for both of them to prove where they want to be and if they deserve to be here. Because this is a hard fight for either man. And it's a beautiful main event. It's a worthy main event. You know, I think the boxer beats beats Fatia Kellis, hey. not the brawler. Anyone who stands there and brawls with this man will have a war like they'll never forget. Yep. It's, it's Like Jacob NG in the previous fight, this will be fought for the IBF international title. So another prestigious belt up for grabs. It's a good punch there from Fateh Kalis, catching Liam on the back foot. Wow, this is an evenly, evenly matched fight with both guys ready to step up onto a higher stage. Both yep. guys looking to you know make their mark on the world scene, and this is just the fight they both need. A hard, tough fight. You know which. This is going to bring out the best of Pyro, and it's going to bring out the best of, of Fati Hakelis. Yep. At this stage of both of these guys' careers, they need to both be fighting world-rated fighters. In, yep. or, in order to progress further up the ladder, they need to be fighting the top 15 fighters every fight from here on in. They're both in phenomenal condition. It just showed some nice movement there from Pyro, nice evasive movement. It just showed Fati Hakelis once again looking for the kill. He's looking to come in and just mix it. What I've noticed from my little study of him, I, he likes to come in with that jab. He throws the overhand right and the left rip or left uppercut. That overhand right there. And then he'll follow it with the left uppercut or left hook. He just likes to mix it. He likes to stay close. Yep. That's why I feel the boxer beats him. Not the guy who stands there toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. I mean, you might beat him. Paro can beat him like that because Paro's got some power in his hands. But he gives this man from Turkey a chance. A big chance if he stands there and brawls with him. He's got that good under, and then right hand over the top does Fatih Kallis. He's trying to chop it over that right hand. But yep. there's Liam with the receipt straight back on. And good punches there from Liam, a good left hand. See, the thing about Liam, he's not only a sharp boxer, he's a devastating puncher. He's got some, you know, he's got dynamite in his fist. I think his punch, I would be fair to say that his punch would be a heavier punch than Fatima, but Fatima would throw his more often, and he would throw his heavy punches with... A lot of conviction. Yep. You know, that, that's his style. Come in with heavy punches. Break, step back. It's a good matchup. It's a good it, matchup, it Nathan DiCarlo. It, it is. If I've got one one little critique for Liam, when he's going backwards, he's going backwards in a straight line, which yep. is which is allowing Fatef Kalish to just keep on moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, and just throwing those punches down the line. 
Yeah, we need to see him come out with an angle, don't we? Come Correct. out to the side, punch off it, and just, just mix up the uh, opportunities for Fatou Makalas. You can just see the, the expression of Fatima's face. He just loves it. You know what I mean? He's just the type of guy who just loves being in this ring and he loves mixing it. And that's good from Liam. Just tapping away, just tapping at the gloves, waiting for the opportunity to arise, and then bang with his power hand. He's got to be careful, Liam, throwing those uppercuts, you know, those lead uppercuts, because yep. we know what's going to come back from Fatima is the overhand right. Good competitive round wow. once again. Liam I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase. Told you how to run the race. Every move was on the page. But I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave. Had to find a way to change. Had to leave to find my way. Caught up in a daydream, I be in my mind up there almost daily It's how I pass time, no opinions safely It's how I understand what I want in this place, see Cause everybody wanna tell you bad things What could go wrong, what fame brings To give Yeah, to yeah. For me, we know what Kellis is gonna bring He's gonna come and he's gonna He's gonna look to fight, you know He's gonna look to land heavy punches He's sharp, he's, 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 he's vicious he, he is, he's courageous, he's just ready to explode and Liam, we need him to see his boxing skills, his nice evasive movement when he gets caught in the corner, his nice defensive skills, and then land his own sharp shots. It, it really is going to be an arm wrestle, I believe, for four or five rounds, Nathan. I agree. And the thing about this arm wrestle, they're both looking to land, aren't they? Yeah. And it's done with plenty of skill, too, this arm wrestle. There's no, yep. there's no just uh, n not, not thinking about it, rushing in, just sort of throwing punches like with windmill punch type yep. actions. It's, it's, everything's calculated. Everything's thrown. It's precise and on point. Exactly. Every punch, every step, every head movement is done for a specific reason. Whether it's to make your opponent miss, whether it's to open them up for something else. They both know what they're doing. Tell us... Uh, Fatih Talis knows exactly what he's doing when he's got his hands up like that, making uh, Liam Parra throw his shot so he can look to counter back with that overhand right and that left uppercut right there. Liam knows exactly what he's doing. It's a very, very good matchup. There's a good left hand there from Liam. Trying to back his opponent, but he's standing, he's growing well, Fatih Talis. He is. I mean, both of these guys are having good moments in this first two rounds so far. Comes with wayward shots, marching forward, does Fatih Kallis. None he's, of them landing. He's shown us exactly what he's going to do. Look for that overhand right, the one I call the number nine. He's looking for that number nine. He'll throw it every time he gets Liam Paro against the ropes. Nice shots yeah. there from Fatih Makalas. Yeah, very good. That's where Liam just got to tap away. This is where he wants to be, centre ring. When he's back on the ropes, that's when he's in a dangerous position. Whoa. Yes. It's thrown with venom. That's better from Liam Paro. That's it. Tap to the body. Lower that guard. Finish off to the head. Yeah, anyone who stands in brawls with Fatima Callas is, uh, you know, is going to have a hard fight. The way to beat him, I feel, is to outbox him. Because you stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, mate, he's a very dangerous customer. Yeah, he's slick. You can see that. He's slick and he's vicious. And he's fit. He's in phenomenal condition. He's got sharp punches. He's got high, high guard, good defense. And he comes back. Every time you hit him, he'll come back just like that. He can't sit in the pocket there, Liam. When he's, when he's finished his punches, he's, gonna, he's either, either going to cramp the style of Fateh Kallis or get out of there. The thing I like about Liam, he's able to find a home for that left hand. He, he seems to be able to just find a home right through the high guard. Close rounds, very, very yeah, close very rounds. very close. And it was a good shot there right at the end by Fateh Kallis, bringing it a little bit closer, that round. What did you see here, Nathan DiCarlo? It was a good display of straight punching to start off from Liam Paro, but Fateh found his groove and tried to break down that distance. But very, very technical from both boys. It's, this is a high level of boxing. It really is. Once again, a shout-out to epicenter.tv. 
which is fast becoming the home of boxing in Australia. All the good fights you'll be able to see on epicenter.tv. Ace Boxing Promotions is putting on another cracker show here tonight. Big thank you to our major sponsors as well, Ultra Tune, the Rhino Range, DSS Law, and Toy Box. Thank you very much for all your help and your contribution. go Liam starting as he finished with straight punches moving his Turkish opponent well, making him fall off balance spinning him around and what I like is when, when he missed Lara got off balance but he come running straight back in he just got he's here for business oh yeah he's not here, he's not here to lose he's not here to make up the card he's here to fight he's here to win and he's here to knock out Liam Paro easier said than done because Liam Paro does have dynamite in his hands he's got good movement and he can find a home for that left hand and that right rip to the body good matchup once again good matchup good matchmaking from your dad and this is an even even an evenly matched fight it comes down to inches, inches doesn't it Nathan? Oh, you know, no there's doubt. only little things that is going to create openings for either man That was a good punch there. One-two combination there from Liam Parra. Fateh Kallis launching forward with his right hand, missing the mark. Well, okay, break, step One break. thing's clear, Nathan DiCarlo. Fateh Kallis, he tries to fight you like you stole something. Yep. He really does try and punch you like you stole his bike. This now man's here for business. He's here to land serious pain with that right hand. He's obviously got faith in his right hand, and he's got a beautiful right hand. He's got a 46, or almost a 50% yep. knockout ratio, so he knows he's got power in his hands. He can do finish the job when he needs to. It's very important, in my opinion, for Liam Parra to stick onto the jab and keep boxing, keep using that movement, keep using that angles. Yep. Never, like you said, go straight back. He needs to come back in angles. Yep. Always be first with the jab. A little bit of head movement, a bit of feints. And mix up the jabs like that. Because it's this type of fight, one wrong move, he's going to get hit with a very, very hard overhand right. And invest in the body, as he's doing there. Yep. Good matchup, Nathan DiCarlo. Yeah, it is a very good matchup. Both boys matching each other's qualities. One punches, the other one returns a favour soon after. You can just see, can't you? They've got a lot of pride, both of these fighters. You know, they put their hands up, they let the opponent throw, they wear the shots on the gloves, and then they throw back. Yeah, they're punching in turns, no doubt. You know, uh, undefeated fighters don't know how to lose. That's right. They're yeah. the hardest fighter to beat because they don't know how to lose. They don't know how to lose, and part of that, you do everything you can to win. It's Especially, Carly, in this modern era, everyone's so fascinated with protecting that O. Yep. And that is such, it comes with such pride to keep that O. So, you know, they, it's that extra element of that want to keep that undefeated record. So far, so good. We're seeing the same thing. Fatima Kallis coming in with those big bombs. Liam Parra being able to move out the way and then start off the exchanges with the straight punches. Yep. <laughs> Round five of ten. So far, so good. Evenly matched fight. Fatima Callis coming in, showing that he's coming in, looking for those overhand rights. He's, he's, he's looking to mingle, he's looking to fight, he's looking to stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Liam Paro knows he has to stay out long. He has to use his angles, his boxing abilities, his skill, shoot with sharp punches and invest with some shots to the body, Nathan. Yes. Currently ranked number three in the world is Liam with the WBO. He wants that mandatory spot sooner rather than later, obviously, so he can have his chance of dethroning the current champion, Maurice Hooker, but he needs to get past Fateh Kallis if that's going to happen. He needs to land those shots. He needs to, he's going to have to wear a few punches. You know, to beat a guy like Fatima Kallis, you, you're going to have to walk through wars. You know, you're going to have to walk through some wars. You're going to wear some big shots and just keep going. That, that's part of stepping up in boxing. 
You know, the same with Fatima Kalas. If he's going to beat Liam Perro, right, he's going to wear some beautiful team. shots. He's going to wear some body shots because we all know he can't punch. He can't fight. The thing is, you always got to wonder, I guess, about his hands. Which hand was it? His right hand or his left hand? Do you remember? Uh, it was both, to be honest. It was a, there was a small fracture in both in both hands. But yep. um, since then, they've obviously changed the gloves. That's a, that was a big thing, I think. Um, they were wearing raised gloves last time, which is yep. predominantly a puncher's glove. But if you're not wrapped up properly, you're going to do some massive damage to those hands. So they've changed back to the Everlast now. Obviously, wrap the hands differently, and uh, hopefully that solves the problem. So that would be some inside information. Your brother, obviously, the, the trainer of Liam Paris, he would have told you what's going on. So his hands are pretty good so far, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they, they've, he's been punching well for a, for a good couple of months now. So he's, uh, his sparring's been all in, in tune and, and he's, been, he's been flying in the, in, in the training arena anyway. So that's, that's the main thing. And one thing that I worried about is that when guys, fighters lose their hands, break their hands, yep. they lose a bit of confidence, don't they? That's true, yeah. But uh, obviously, he, he's, letting, he, he's letting go his fist yeah. here, so it looks like it hasn't, you know, obviously... Doesn't look like he's lost any confidence. No, yeah. no, it hasn't worried him one bit. He's doing good. He's using his angles here, but Fatima Kallis, as usual, just keeps coming. What I like about Fatima Kallis is as soon as Liam Parra does his work, Fatima will come to be first. Yes, yes. He won't wait. He won't stick around. He'll just look to come first, and he'll come hard. And like I was saying in the earlier fights, that's when somebody's most susceptible to being hit. When they finish their punches, their defenses yep. are usually down. If you jump straight on them, you're more than likely than not to hit them. Welcome to all our viewers watching this in Turkey and Germany around the world on Epicenter.tv. This is the main event, Ace Boxing. Tonight it's been a good night. There's been some exciting fights. No doubt this main event is booting up to it. Wow. It's good boxing. It's good boxing from Liam, and it's good to see Fatima Kallis come with his, with his big punches. He hasn't changed anything. He's always coming with heavy intent on his punches. Once again, both boys throwing down. You can see Liam working really hard and close, trying to break down the defences of Fateh Kellis. But Fateh Kellis is equal to the challenge. He comes back straight away. There's a good left-hand lead there from Liam Paro, knocking the head back of Fateh Kellis. He's a very hard target, isn't he, Fateh Kellis? He's got his hands up nice and high when they're in close. Liam has to punch around and then punch through, and he's... So far, he's doing well. He's having good moments. But a very hard target to hit is Fighter McCallis. Styles make fights, Nathan. This is the style. To me, it's the boxer versus the fighter, the puncher. Yep. You know, obviously, Fighter McCallis is looking to be the fighter. He's the puncher. That's what he's looking for. He's not looking to out-slick and out-jab. He's just looking to knock this man out. Yes. And Liam Paro has to use his boxing skills, his ability, his slick movement, his footwork, and he's doing a good job. As is Fatima Michaelis. As he gets Liam in the corner, he lines with some heavy shots, but Liam is able to turn him around and come back and use his boxing ability. And this is where he needs to be. He needs to be the center of the ring. Yep. This is where he holds the advantages. You can see he's a, he's, a, he's a much slicker opponent in the center of the ring because he's got full range on his shots there. And he's got good footwork. He's got good footwork. He's got good balance. If he stays still like that, he's going to wear shots like that because this man will throw. You don't have to second guess Fatima Kallis. He will throw with everything he has. He will throw with bad intentions. So Liam Parra, for me, has to use his footwork like he's doing here. He has to use his movement, come in and out. And catch Fatima Kallis as he's coming in or when he makes a miss. Nice, throw the left hand and then high defense. Time breaks, step back. Slip there. Yeah, just a slip there from there. As Fatima Kellis comes in with his little sharp, hard shots. Even his little shots, you know, from close range, they're heavy. They've got bad intention on everything he throws. As he tries to get Liam Parra against the rope here. Liam done well there to move out. That's where he needs to be, in the centre of the ring. That's right. I mean, every second, you, you can just sense every second, 
Liam Parrow is in danger from Fuerte McKellis because he's always coming, he's always looking, and he's always ready. Oh, he always has to be on with this sort of fighter. He's, he's dangerous to the, to the last bell. And this, like we said before, this type of fight benefits both fighters if they want to take the next step up in mm. their career. Because mm. you cannot take a second off. You know, with less opponents, you can take a few seconds off here and there. You can take time off between, you know, during the rounds. But in this fight, you can't. There's not one second here that Liam can take a second off. Neither can Fatima McAllis. You take a second off, you get tagged. Yep. Good matchup. Look at Fatima McAllis. Always, always coming forward. Always pressing. Always trying to get himself in that position to land off heavy shots. Liam Paro, on the other hand, staying sharp. Staying elusive. Going with bad intentions himself. Like we said, he's got to stay cool, he's got to stay sharp, and he's got to keep boxing this man. Yep, that's right. There's a good left hand there from Liam Parra hitting the mark as he starts to warm up to that round. Definitely his bench punch of the fight so far from Liam Parra. Woo. Shots to finish the round for Liam Parra. As Liam Parra jogs across the ring to start this round, he feels he can take uh, Fatima McAllis, I feel, into a little bit of deep water, he can put a little bit of pressure on him. The thing about it, you know, he's a boxer, but he does possess great power himself. Yes, yep. He can't be reckless here, though, just because he's got it. He rocked his opponent a little bit towards the end of the last round. He can't be reckless. He's still going to come, up with his, come in with his defenses high because Fateh Kallis can bang. He can bang, and he looks to bang. You know, he throws his punches with bad intention, which makes him an exciting fighter. You know, 400-odd amateur fights. This man knows his way around the ring. He hasn't lost as a professional. He's got a lot of pride. He throws with conviction. That's why I feel it is the boxing skill that can beat this man, not standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. I like it. He wears a body shot, he throws a body shot. Like we said before, it's a matter of inches, you know. It's one mistake. You, you just just so close away from devastation in this fight. Because both fighters are bringing out the best in each other. I remember the great Kosha Zoo telling me, it's not a game of centimetres, it's a game of millimetres. He used wow. to practice perfection on the bag, on the speed ball, on the training pads. Everything he did was yep. to the millimetre. It wasn't to the centimetre, it was to the millimetre. That, that came from his own mouth. Mate, if Costa said it, it's true. Simple as that. You know, Liam's just at the stage now where he could be turning this fight around into his own, you know, into his fight. He's starting to land some nice shots. He's starting to have his way, land big shots on Fatima McAllis. He's starting to back him up, but he can't get careless. He needs to stay sharp. Like Costa said, he's only millimetres away, and he's millimetres away from a big overhand right from Fatima Callis. But otherwise, he's doing good. You know, you can slowly, slowly see the sting starting to leave Fatima Callis' punches. Yeah, as the rounds go by, he's getting punched in his sting out of him. So, as you can see, Lem having more success the last yep. two rounds. And he's starting to rock the head back of Fateh Kallis. Now he's able to get him into the corner, him onto the ropes, and land his heavy punches. Whereas earlier it was so dangerous for Liam when Fatima was able to catch him against the ropes. Watch your hands in there. It's a strong arm wrestle, Nathan Ducala. Yeah, this is a chess match, isn't Wait, it? It's just back, sort of, you move, I move.
Wow, hats off to both guys. Hats off to their trainers, their training team, their sparring partners. Everything is done professionally in this fight. You can see as Liam gets hurt by that punch. Oh, he needs to cover up. He needs to tie him up here. Because here comes Fatima Callas. I believe Liam Perry was saved by the bell then. Yeah. Lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working hard, yeah. I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, nah, likely. I be taking shots, yeah, cold blooded, icy. Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing. In the front row, run it up when they hype me. The following grows, they know how to ignite me. Call me CEO, I've been running sh right, see. And I am playing games. I come back and just start off the jab, keep everything at a distance. Round eight of ten, the finish, the finish line is coming up. But there's still plenty of work to be done here by Liam Paro. Keeping him at distance, I feel, is a good, good thing for him to do. Definitely. The jabs to the body, the straight, straight lifts to the body, and the footwork. He does possess extraordinary, foot, extraordinary footwork. I like his footwork, Liam Paro. He keeps very nice balance, keeps his distance most times. But it's this time here where you back up to the ropes, your distance is gone. See, because the thing is, if he can keep his footwork, he can see Fatima has to step in. And it's when he steps in, that's when you can catch him with the shot. Correct. But he's got to be very careful when Fatima Callis gets him against the ropes, like here, because we know he's going to punch with bad intention. Back. And he does possess good power. And this is where he knows he needs to work now, Fateh Kallis. You can see when he's going backwards, that's when yep. Liam is not comfortable. Right, but back. Liam, on the other hand, needs to get back to the center of the ring and back on the jab. Keep him at a distance. That's where exactly where he needs to be. I like when Liam throws his uh, straight left after that jab. He's, he's been able to find a home for it a few, a few times, and, and it looks good when he does it. He's got to watch these short punches from Fatih McCallis, his right hooks like that. Yep. That's a good body shot there from Fatih McCallis again, and Liam's back on. He's got to make him miss, he's got to make him pay, he's got to box him. He can't stand toe to toe. He can, but he doesn't need to. He needs to make this fight as easy as he can. And he shouldn't be sitting in the pocket right there because... Obviously, it's at a distance where Fatih can hit him still. It's hard. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to box and, and make the fight easy. Like yes. we saw Jacob NG do so easily in his fight. Sometimes it's so hard to do. You just want to stand there and fight. And even though it's physically harder to stand there and fight, sometimes mentally it feels harder to box and move. As strange as that sounds. And that's why you got to applaud the, the performances of Jacob NG because that's so hard to do for 10 rounds. Exactly, exactly. That was a good shot there from Liam Paro. And, and there's the receipt from Fateh Kallis. But Liam Paro is marching forward. He, he, he landed two nice left hands there. Nice left to the body there. Both of these guys aren't leaving anything in the, in the tank. They're not going to stay. They're not going to die wandering. They're going to let everything go. No, nah, this is an evenly matched contest. There's no doubt about that. Just no, as it seemed, Liam was starting to land some shots. Fatima Kallis comes back with some shots of his own. Yes. He can't stay in the bunker there. He got to no. get, get on his bike and get back to center ring. That's where he's the best. He doesn't want to be sitting there trading with Fateh Kallis. Especially with a guy like Fatima who froze with bad intentions. Yes. Two more rounds to go in this 10 round contest. Who will be victorious? Who will lift the IBF International Super Lightweight title? Liam starts fast. That's exactly what he needs to do. Very sharp. He needs to be sharp, sharp. Exactly. He needs to stay sharp. Because when he's sharp, he does things nice. His movement's good. His angles move. His, his punches to the body. And then his defense straight after is good. He needs to use his footwork, in my opinion. 
Basti Michaelis, he just needs to do what he's doing. Come forward and look to punch with bad intention. That's his style and that's his strength. And that's why he's undefeated as a fighter. You know, that's what's got him through 400 amateur fights. That works for him. And that's what he does best. We can see here how dangerous he looks. Trying to just back Liam Parra up against the ropes and land something with bad intention. Yeah, there's good variation there from Partey Callis digging into the body as Liam Paro comes back with his own. See, Liam's got good balance, he's got good movement, he's got good footwork. I feel it's better for him to use that against an opponent who likes to come and stand heavily footed and brawl. <laughs> he's a fighter too, he's a puncher yep. to himself. Liam Parra. He's got dynamite in his hands, like I mentioned before. He's starting to find a home for some of his heavy shots. Fighting Michaelis, always coming forward. He's got so much pride, this Turkish warrior. And once again, staying in that distance where it suffocates yep. your opponent. Yep. You always have to be thinking because you're one punch away from disaster based on where he's standing in front of you. Nice body shot, okay, break, right break, rip from Liam Parra in the south pole position. He's choosing to stand toe to toe with Fatima Michaelis. What a good even matchup this one is. Excellent, excellent matchup. No doubt these fighters will have so much respect for each other in years to come. They'll always remember this battle where they brought out the best of each other at this stage of their careers. Nice shots landed by both fighters. Yeah, good shots. Palace, uh, Palace comes straight back over the top. Liam Parra looking to go to the body. Using his footworks. Callis always coming forward, landed a nice little left hook there, did he, on Liam Paro. Liam Paro comes back. You can't tell who's hurt or who's not. No, they're both fighting. And they're both giving as good as they get as Fateh Callis hits Paro with a couple of good shots. But here comes Liam Paro back. It is tit for tat. It is tit for tat. And both of these fighters bringing out the best of each other as Fatima comes again with bad intention. Liam Paro is, is able to stand up for the task and he wants to. He seems, Nathan, that he wants to stand there toe-to-toe. -to -toe. As much as I don't want him to, it looks like he, he, that's exactly what he wants to do. Might be a level of exhaustion too, Carly. You just never know yes. because obviously he's a little bit more tired. The legs aren't moving as good as they were in the first six rounds. Exactly. That's exactly right. And pride as, as a fighter. You're a fighter, you just want to stand toe-to-toe. I've got an itch I can't scratch, I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me, an open wound scar to see. Everybody come here, gather round, welcome to the freak show, the best in town. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly, thoughts jumbled round, think I need a new lobotomy. Wait, all these thoughts are too negative, I don't want to get lost in the sedative. Gotta show them what I got, I'm competitive, you know I'm about to go off, I won't let them win, I'll take a stab, I want to chase a bag, I want a way I can change all the things I lack, I gotta face the facts, I gotta taste in that. Got me obsessed with the rest, I got an itch to scratch. Last round though for Di Carlo. As Fighting McAllis runs across the ring. He wants nothing more than to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and break this man, Liam Parra, but it's easier said than done as Liam Parra's got that nice footwork, that nice balance. He knows exactly what he has to do in this last round as well. That's right, and look at that big right hand lead there from Fateh Kallis. He's trying to take this out of the judges' hands here, but look at Liam Paro, beautiful on his feet, and comes back with his own punches. Two and three punch combinations all landing there from Paro. All landing, what kind of tough is Fateh Kallis? He just shook his head and kept walking forward, looking to land his own shots. Hats off to both fighters. I said it before, I said it again. This is an excellent display, an excellent matchup. Wow. Liam good shots good. there. Hey, two good shots there from Liam. Break, step back. Break. Oh, and Fateh Kallis lands a big right hand of his own. If you let Fatima go first, and, and if you can't make him miss, he's going to make you pay. He's coming with bad intentions. Now he has Liam on the ropes. And this is where he looks to open up. 
And Liam tries to fight back, and here comes Fighter McAllis. Fighting with bad intentions. He's got to be careful, Liam. He can't look he's, at the ref. He can't look at the referee here. He's going to fight to the final bell. He's got to move or he's going to tie him up. This is the first deep water Liam has been in, and this is where he's going to get tested. But look at the look, he's, look at the response from Liam Parra. As the crowd gets behind him, and here comes Fighter McAllis. He's throwing punches again. Left, right, left, right. Liam Parra chooses to stand toe to toe. He chooses to stand there and trade with this man. Whether he should or he shouldn't, he's choosing to do it. As usual, Fatima McAllis fights back Nathan DiCarlo. What a fight we have witnessed here tonight. Both boys trying to hold on now. A little bit gas potentially. Fatima McAllis comes again. He loves it. This is where he loves it. He likes to be toe-to-toe -to -toe and he likes to make it a fight. And it's exactly what he's trying to do. Liam needs to keep using his movement as he's doing here. Be first in his movement, I feel, will work for him. He doesn't need to wear no big heavy shots out of nowhere. There's no doubt. Fatima's looking to land, Nathan Yeah, Dicale. you can see him loading up the big shot. It's ready to come. I hope everyone watching on Epicenter TV is enjoying this. As the Turkish crowd get up on their feet, they're happy for what they see from Fatima Callas. The people from Gold Coast are loving what they see from Liam Parra, and they're getting right behind the fighter as they both stand and go toe to toe in this final round. What you what seeing, Nathan? What you seeing? What about it? Is tip for tat. Stand and applaud. What a fight, Liam Parra and Fatima Callas. This is the world level. This is Australian boxing at its best. Wow. They, they, these are the fights these guys need at this stage of their career. As you, know, you can see, the final bits of the last round, it was a seesawing about from the very start to the very end. Both boys fighting fire with fire. Both of these fighters are looking to step up onto the world rank, you know, the world scene, I should say, and these are the fights they need. These tough, hard fights that make you bring out the best in you. As you know, Carly, these fights are character building. These, yep. are, the, these are the fights that build your character and show you what, you're, what you are on the world stage. Good See, shots from very, both boys. Yeah, he's oh. able to make fights from a miss. And that wasn't, that wasn't easier, yeah, that was easier said than done because he did throw with such bad intention most of the time, did fight to Michaelis. You can see the the markings on the face of Liam Parra. He done him, himself and his family proud. It was a battle tonight, but he survived it. And I think he's got the chocolates here tonight. Definitely worthy of the main event of the evening here tonight for Five Star Boxing as we go to the judges' scorecards for the final time this evening. Our judges score this fight after 10 rounds of boxing. 97-93, 99-91, All for the winner for the WBO Global and the IBF International Super Lightweight titles, Liam the Prodigy Paro. Thank you for joining us here tonight at the Star Casino on the Gold Coast for Five Star Boxing. Another absolutely awesome night of boxing action with Liam Parra, you saw just then, retaining his WBO title and picking up the IBF international belt. He has got a plethora of belts right now in his cupboard. I'm Dave Bell, the Fight MC. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. And until we see you next time, keep your hands up. Good night.